life after all life. He is the beginner, the author of all life. Therefore, thank him and glorify his holy name this hour in Jesus' name. Eleken do soko marian do ko pain da kin do ko mante ken do ko marian da kin do ko toriana. Elesa kin da raka do soko male marian da raka do ko pele ki andarian da kapuriana. In the name of Jesus, we magnify you. We extend our sincere gratitude unto your holy living name. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, take glory, take glory, take glory. Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the Yahweh. You are the I am that I am. You are the patience of day. You are Adonai. Jesus, no one can be compared unto you. For there's no name given unto us at which we must be saved except through the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are all sufficient to save. We say we magnify you. You are the one spring of wisdom. We say we magnify you. You are God revealed in the flesh. We magnify you. You are the living one. The I am that I am. We thank you for your glory that you have looked down upon us with mercy and grace and you have saved us through your compassionate love. Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we love you with the love you have loved us. We bless your holy name this hour in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. People of God. Let us pray for the revival of our soul right now. The revival of your own soul. That your soul will be quickened, will be energized, will be awakened to hear the word of life. To hear the word of Jesus Christ and embraces and the spirit of God interpreting the word of God to your understanding. In the name of Jesus, therefore, pray for revival of your soul right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Conto canteres que toquin da rakato yatin da rambon da kindoro banda. Eleken do soko per rakata ton da kin da rambata da kindo. Eleken do soko men de ken da rakapore kiana. Elema maton da rekan do soko da kin da rambata kina. Eleba barakan do soko parian da rambata kina. Eleme meto to pen de ken to tan da tapori anda. Eleki anda rambatu to tore me me eleme me me. Le kendo kotakina rababa takindo ro konale andole ki andarababa. We pray for the revival of our souls, O Lord. The revival of the souls of your children. The revival of the soul of your children. May their spirit be energized, be enkindled, be quickened. The spirit of power and wisdom and understanding from the Lord of hosts. In the name of Jesus, may the seventh spirit of the Lord most high rest upon you. Right now, may your soul be wakened. May your soul rise back to life in Jesus' mighty name. We give up praise. We give up praise for an answer prayer right now. In Jesus' most wonderful, powerful name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, people of God, may the Lord richly bless you. I love when we all come together like this. The Lord richly bless you. Please, I'm Pastor Daniel Court from Embrace Christ Holiness Ministry, Germany. If you have come on this broadcast, I plead with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to, to share it to bless other souls as well. The Lord bless you. Amen. The topic for today, today is the Lord's Supper in a way, but we will bring that at the end of the service. Amen. Uh, so the topic for today is the hour has come for you to be glorified. The hour has come for you to be glorified. Amen. Our Bible verses are John 12, verse 23 to 36, John 10, 16 to 18, John 17, 1 to 5, Matthew 26, verse 26 to 28. Amen. So, let's open our Bible to John 12. Amen. All right. So we begin with... Uh, John 10, verse 16, boy. John 10. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So, John chapter 12. Amen. From John chapter 12, uh, we begin from verse 23, but I want to say something small about from verse 1 before we enter into the verse 23. Amen. So in John chapter 12, Jesus, six days before his death on the cross, was anointed with a full jar of perfume, which could have been the salary of a whole year. Amen. Mary Magdalene 
poured the expensive perfume on Jesus' leg and wiped it with her hair. Amen? And in the olden days, and even to now, the feet of man, of a, or of a person, is the lowest part of that person, and that feet has no glory. And also, in the olden days and to now, the glory of a woman is her hair. And therefore, uh, Mary Magdalene poured oil, expensive oil, perfume, on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her glory, which was her hair. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, this statement of Mary wiping her glory, using her glory to wipe the feet of Jesus, agree with the word of John the Baptist when he said, he was not worthy to untie the sandals of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Mary, with all her glory, Mary Magdalene, with all her glory, was not worthy rather than to bow with her glory in the, or on the, before the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. So after that event, Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem as a king, and the people shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. After that event, Jesus predicted his death, and some Greek who came to worship at the festival wanted to see Jesus. So this led us to read John 10 verse 16, which I would like, I would like us to read. He says, Jesus said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. It means that the Israelites, the Hebrew, Jesus came for the Hebrew, hallelujah. And therefore, there are other sheep who are not fold of the Hebrew. And therefore, he continued, <clears throat> I have other sheep that are not of his sheep fold, of his sheep fold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Praise the name of the living God. So Jesus wanted all people to be saved. He wanted all people who were not Israel to come under his voice, to listen to him, so that all of us shall become one flock, one citizens, under one voice, one command, one commandment, and one king, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, in the divine mind of Jesus, he was teaching the people, and he's teaching us now, how to leave heaven on earth, and how to return back to heaven when we die one day. So this lead us to read uh, John 12, verse 23. Praise the name of the living God. And I read, it says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Hallelujah. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This statement shows that, shows the kind of death Jesus will die. On the cross to pay for the penalty of sins. Two, this shows the kind of resurrection he will resurrect from the grave. Three, this is the extension of his salvation to the whole humanity. And four, and how he will be taken to heaven. So this statement it applies to at least four things: how he will die on our behalf so that we will receive the forgiveness of sins and how he will be resurrected, and how his salvation will be carried throughout the whole world. And therefore, my brothers and sisters in the law, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he continued. Amen? He continued or he explained to them how this glory will take place. There is no glory without working for it. Hallelujah. And nothing comes easily. Amen? Even God in his own mighty power, when nothing was created, he was all alone until when he needed the glory of creation, he spoke his first word. Let there be light. Let there be creation. So God worked for his glory. And therefore, Jesus Christ explained to all those who come to salvation how this glory would take place. So please let us pay attention. Amen. So Jesus Christ explained to them how this glory will take place, and all who will work, or who, all who will want to share in this glory, must follow the same path. So as it is written, as above, so below. Hallelujah. 
as it is in heaven, so on earth. A servant is not above his master, so as above, so below, as it is in heaven, so on the earth. And a servant is not above his master. And therefore, if this glory is prepared for eternal God in the flesh, the way he passed through to ascertain this glory, we believe that followers must follow the same pathway to what? To ascertain or to come and share in his glory. Hallelujah. So he further explained, explain, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Hallelujah. So, in a corn or in a grain is the life force. The life power for multiplication of grain is in a, a single seed of a grain. The life force of many grains, multitude of what? Corns is in the heart, one single seed. Amen? So this one single seed might benefit a lot of people, even the whole world. I see the whole world. But this lifespan, the multitude, the benefit of that seed is what? It's trapped in one single seed. But until that seed falls and dies, it cannot reproduce itself and give many seeds or many corns to people to feed on. Hallelujah. And therefore, the grain must be dissolved and, and any preventions must be taken away before multiplication. One seed gives a lot of corns. Hallelujah. But before that happens, this grain, this seed must fall to the ground and loses its beauty and loses its roughage and loses itself before the life power in that seed what, will sprout out to, uh, to germinate and give many corns to people to feed on. Praise the name of the living God. So, when the grain is planted, the husk dies. The roughage dies. It means only the life came for multiplication lives. Hallelujah. So, Jesus explained, he, Jesus explained, he has eternal life in himself. So this is the analogy, the example Jesus Christ was giving them because it was the example that they could relate to because most of the people were hot, farmers. Amen? So, in fact, Jesus told uh, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Whoever lives by living in me or believing in me will not die. Hallelujah. So, this eternal life is trapped in the body of Jesus. This eternal life is trapped in the body of Jesus. Just like a multitude of grain trapped in a single cell, a seed. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So Jesus continued to explain, unless I die to purchase you from sin, you cannot have eternal life. So unless a grain of corn dies, it cannot Produce itself, its life uh, span or its life gem power cannot reproduce. The same applied to Jesus. He was explaining that eternal life in him, unless he died to purchase earth from sin, we cannot inherit eternal life. Praise the name of the living God. So Jesus died like the grain and he releases his inner power of eternal life to as many as received him. So this morning, if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then you are missing eternal life. Because you must receive him to receive the forgiveness of sin. There's no human being on earth who can say, I have not sinned before. If we could even... Uh, 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 oppress someone and see the thought that is in their mind, we will see how wicked human beings are. We cannot. That is why we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
every thought that is hostile, that is devilish towards God, we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse our sins, our thoughts, our guiltiness, our intentional actions that are not good. We need the eternal holy blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all his unrighteousness. Hallelujah. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, if you have not received Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, I, I sincerely um, present the Lord to you as a Savior, eternal God, who saves all souls from their sins and from the power of Satan. Therefore, come under the supervision of the Holy Spirit that leads to the convictions for you to uh, renounce your sins and, and receive repentance and enter into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's continue. Because Jesus loves us, he died to self. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. He has eternal life in him. He was trapped in this body. If he wished, he could have had eternal life in that body. Everyone would die and he alone would remain. But he was not selfish to himself. So he died to self. Amen? He did not allow the pains in the flesh to overcome him. Disgrace could not prevent him from the cross. Beatings could not prevent him from dying for you. Selfishness could not prevent him. Tons of clowns could not prevent him. It could not prevent him from giving you eternal life and then the forgiveness of sin. So, Jesus did not love his own life in the flesh. He did not love his own life in the flesh. Amen? On the account of earthly pleasures, desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. He chose to die to all things that pollute spirit and soul. Spirit, soul, spirit, uh, spirit, soul, and body. He chose to die to all those things. Praise the name of the living God. Because he is showing the way to eternal life. Until a grain falls to the ground and dies, it's James' power cannot be multiplied to produce many grains. So he has eternal life in himself. Until he died to some kind of practices, he will not be able to release this eternal life to all people who hear of it and come to receive it. So Jesus Christ of Nazareth died to self. He prevented his soul from engaging in the activities of his days. The lies and the legalistic of the uh, some of the scribes and the Pharisees, he, he did not hold, agree with them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Therefore, believers must die to the evil desires. He's showing us the way. Jesus is showing us the way. And he has prevented himself and uh, prevented himself from engaging in certain activities in order to make eternal salvation secure for you and I. Therefore, you must come and follow him and do as he has done. So believers, we must also uh, deny ourselves of what? The desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pleasures of life or the pride of life. There are desi desires in each content is a good thing. But whatever the flesh desires that is contrary to the word of God is evil. Whatever the eye desires, that is contrary to what? Divine principle and morality, ethnicity, then we must, we must what? Go away from that thing because it pollutes our spirit, soul, and body. It prevents us from entering into light when we die one day. Because whatever we have done to this body, we have done to the soul, and the mark is on the soul. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So, Believers man must die to the evil desires of the flesh, evil desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. All these desires are not in the interest of eternal life. Praise the name of the living God. Jesus said, whoever loves their life will lose it. It means, if you love your life on account of unnatural enjoyment, you love your life on account of what? Uh, unnatural enjoyment, you will lose it. Amen? You love your life so much that you can drink and you don't know even where you are. You become a drunkard. You love your life so much that you don't have, you want to have by force. 
and you go stealing, you will lose it. Hallelujah. You love your life so much that you want to have everything for yourself. And whatever you cannot acquire by using a devious means to, to acquire it. You will lose that life because this is not in, in the interest of eternal salvation. Praise the name of the living God. You don't have so you covet. Hallelujah. If you're a married man, a married woman, you are going behind your husband. You what? This is not good. You might contract sexually uh, diseases and you might die. So all these desires of the flesh, they are not in the interest of our eternal salvation. That is why. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we are flesh. We are human beings. We need divine assistance to come out of all these practices. That is why the Lord is faithful. When we come with our will to him, he's able to help us because he has the supreme power. The power of the Holy Spirit inside everyone. Energize him and quickens him. Uh, uh, for him to respond to divine principles. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So, whoever hates sinfulness, wrongdoing, the, uh, the evil desires of the flesh in this world will have eternal life. That is what is written in John 12, verse 25. Verse 20, 26. Whoever serves me must follow me. This is what Jesus Christ is saying. Like I said earlier on, as above, so below, as it is in heaven, so on earth. Praise the name of the living God. Amen? So, whoever serves me must follow me, and as I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. So, the father honor us with eternal life in Christ Jesus, because the father became Christ Jesus to give us eternal life. So, he honor us with what? Eternal life. So, Jesus' death releases eternal character in everyone who believes in him. So, if this eternal character is released, then you should live by that heart, divine character of Jesus because we are to operate in his kingdom and everyone must fit to the kingdom of our God. So, now, the divine characters, some of them are hot, goodness, righteousness, holiness, faithfulness, gentleness, love, Joy, peace, perseverance, self-control, obedience to the word of God. These are all divine character in Christ. And he died like a grain and he released the divine character to, into all people who believe in him and live in his kingdom. So we must live by that standard because they are the character of those who will go to heaven. So suppose you don't have this kind of character, then, you know, the, the devil who will, will, will want to have you because he has some character uh, introduced in this world. And therefore, all those who have those character must go to where the devil is. And all those who have the character of Jesus and live by his principle, they will go to where Jesus Christ is because he has set it over there. Hallelujah. Whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, my servant will also be. Praise the name of the living God. So my dear brothers and sisters, we must follow the way of Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life because he is the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to eternal heaven except through him and his laid down principles. So there's no shortcut. So above, so below. As above, so below. As it is in heaven, so on earth. Praise the name of the living God. So the verse 27. John 12, verse 27. Now, my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Amen? Father, save me from this hour for eternal salvation's sake. You see, a grain remains a grain unplanted. So, Jesus Christ have, uh, has eternal life in himself. And now, if he deny uh, the flesh, he will be able to give eternal life. But the flesh has to suffer death. The flesh has to suffer death. Has to suffer punishment, torment, disgrace, rejection, suppression. Beatings, crowned with tongues. The flesh will suffer this. So, so should he say this should bypass him? Praise the name of the living God. Now, my soul is troubled. 
And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour? No. My brothers and sisters, we love the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. For eternal salvation's sake, shall we continue in the evil desires of the flesh? Shall we continue in the evil desires of the eyes? Shall we continue in the, in the pride of accumulation? I have it more than you. No. For this very reason, for eternal salvation uh, purposes, God Almighty became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. So that you work out your salvation for you. You work eternal salvation for you and for me. For that reason, he has to die to self and take upon himself servanthood and be punished in the flesh. So for that same reason, a servant is not above his master. He's showing us the way. The same reason, you and me, to deny the flesh, the soul of its abominable desires. This flesh, anything you want to do with the flesh, you can do with it. But you should not allow the inclination of evil to this body because we have a mindset of going to heaven. Praise the name of the living God. This wouldn't have taken place in the first place if Adam had obeyed God's commandment, would have remained in a higher uh, uh, standard of living without any hot death and without any sin. But here comes the case, not like that. Therefore, we must go through the narrow way. And on the narrow road, na narrow road to heaven, you cannot find all practices there. It's a narrow. You cannot have a bag of unforgiveness at your back. No, no, no. There's no way for unforgiveness in the road to eternal salvation. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like bitterness in the road, in the narrow road to eternal salvation. There's nothing like bitterness. There's nothing like enviness. Praise the name of the living God. There's nothing like stealing. There's nothing like idolatry. There's nothing like that because it's a narrow road. So all these things, you leave it aside and you be on the narrow road that leads to eternal salvation. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. And is the road way to what? Destruction is the way of Satan. Unforgiveness is there. Bitterness is there. Idolatry is there. Idol worship is there. Still is there. Medra is there. So it's broad. Everybody does what pleases him. Hallelujah. But there's one great advantage on the broad way. It is broad that you can make a U-turn to the narrow road in the name of Jesus. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we are all not perfect. Grace is abounding. Grace abounds for all of us. To make you turn on the broad road that leads to destruction and come to the narrow road. So on the narrow road, whatever the Lord tells you, you will do it. So when somebody causes you great pain, you come, the Lord says, this will pull you down. So take away unforgiveness. You take it away. Praise the name of the living God. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has eternal salvation in himself. Like a grain, multitude of grain is in a single seed. Until it dies, it dies to self, it dies to pride, it dies to what? The, 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 the beauty of that seed. And it was rotten that it could release the gem power of life to become multitude of seed. The same applies to Jesus. He died to all the things that pollute spirit, soul, and body, and he might give you eternal salvation. So we, must follow his example. We must deny ourselves from everything that contaminates spirit, soul, and body. It is not easy. If I say it is easy, it's a lie. It is not easy. But by the help of the Holy Spirit in us, the Bible says that he that is in us is greater than he that worketh evil in the world. The Holy Spirit is in you, my brothers and sisters. Be energized. Be quickened. May your soul arise to the word of God with power to suppress every Practices that is not of Christ. The name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The verse 28. It says, Father, uh, verse 27 ending. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Hallelujah. Father, glorify your name. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Mothers and fathers in the Lord. The time has come and the hour is now. Where God will glorify you, hallelujah. God will glorify you because you have set yourself apart to serve the living God, to come out of sin and do what is right. You are not called the children of, the children of light. 
because you don't have the knowledge of eternal salvation and the knowledge to do what is good. Therefore, you are not of darkness. You are not living in darkness. Ignorance of the truth. No, you are living in the kingdom of light where revelation is made. What is wrong and what is right. And because of the spirit and grace in us, we choose to do what is right. This made us the children of God. This is the identification and then the differentiation of the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. That the kingdom of light practices and do what is right. The kingdom of darkness do what is uh, uh, wrong in secret. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. He said, Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there was there and heard it said, said it had tended. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Praise the name of the living God. Then a voice came from heaven in the beginning. In Matthew 3, 17, when Jesus Christ was baptized, a voice came from heaven and said, "What? this is my beloved son. This is what God chose to become. When God came in the flesh, he created a body for himself. Because he said in Hebrew 10, 5, 5 going, that when God came on the earth, he said, sacrifices and offering he did not desire. But a body God already created for himself in order to work for your salvation, my salvation. And this voice confirmed that Indeed, this is what God chose to become in the flesh. And when God came to work out the salvation for you and for me, the same voice declared and confirmed that indeed, he has glorified that name that he has on earth, the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, praise the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. So, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, if you deny this body of evil pleasures, the Lord God Almighty will glorify you with eternal life because the things that prevent you from eternal life are the practices that Satan has introduced, has introduced in this world before we were born. We were victim into the system. We were victim into the practices of the system. We were not there, we came and they were there. We practice it. But thank be to God, Apostle Paul said, who rescued us from this body? The Lord Jesus Christ rescued us from this body and has given us his word to follow. And when we follow that word, we shall never and ever miss eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, on TikTok, sometimes some people will do some, some kind of thing and they say, they'll go here, hell, and then they'll slap them. They'll go to heaven, they'll slap them to come. But you will want to go to hell and hell will slap you that you cannot go to hell because you are in Christ and Christ is in you and therefore Heaven is yours in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If you are leading the life of Jesus Christ, you are following his footsteps. If you, you would like to go to even heaven, when you go to heaven, Satan will sack you because you don't belong there. There's no property, character of Satan in you. Therefore, you cannot go to hell. Praise the name of the living God. This is how secure and safe our salvation is in the Lord. Only when you obey him, you serve him, you be where he is, and God Almighty will glorify you and honor you with eternal life. May the Lord honor you with eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. So, the hour has come. If you believe in Jesus Christ and follow his ways, he will give you eternal life. John 11 verse 40, Jesus said, Jesus told Martha, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Someone died for four days. We can agree, even in the natural realm, that when someone died, the eye will dissolve, will spot, the intestines will begin to steal, and then bacteria and worms will begin to sprout out in that whole area, uh, in that geographical area. Hallelujah. But the power of God, the glory of God, made it possible that all the the organs in the body of Lazarus were, were, were quickened with eternal power and glory that what was dead became alive. That is why my brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers in the Lord, when you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, he is inside you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when something is dead in you, by the name of Jesus Christ, you must come back to life. Any organ 
That is what is defiled by sickness, rapes, a uh, uh, cancer, uh, malfunctions of the organs. At the name of Jesus Christ, you are to receive your healing. Hallelujah. Because in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, there is no sickness. It's the kingdom of righteousness and holiness. And sickness is not righteousness. Sickness is not right, righteousness. It is defilement of that the functionality of the body. That functioning of the body is defiled. It's not in its proper function. So when the kingdom of Christ is confirmed on you, it means the king has come on you and the power of the kingdom has come on you. Therefore, sickness must vanish from your body. Therefore, I stand in that same authority in the name of Jesus. Any sickness that is in your body, may your organ receive supernatural healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. It says, After, uh, after Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to those who have those you have given him. Praise the name of the living God. Now, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. There is a hidden code there which you, you may overlook. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Till now, till now. Who has ever seen God? Till now, who has ever seen God? Amen? So, please listen. Father means source. And John 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning, God was not called the only God. That was not the same. The English word was invented. So, in the beginning, his name was a word. And this word is what we have called God. And this word was with God, and the word is God. John 1 verse 14. And this word became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have seen his glory as the only beloved son of God, or God who became a son, full of grace and truth. And therefore, Jesus Christ said that, Father, it means my source. Because in the beginning, the source was the word, and the word is God. Amen? The hour has come that now in the flesh, you have to glorify yourself. Amen? For in the flesh, God Almighty granted himself authority over all people that he gave them eternal life. And now this is eternal life that they know you as the true God. So therefore, the true God, which no one has ever seen, has become flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, who gave God eternal life. Amen. So God came on the flesh came on the surface of the earth to give and to grant eternal life to all people who will come to him my brothers and sisters in the in the in, uh, uh, my brothers and sisters in the Lord people out there believers and unbelievers you have to receive Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your Lord and personal Savior because he is God Almighty in the flesh and he is the only one that is qualified to save you from your sin and give you eternal life I agree that there were many prophets in many religions who came in the name of God, performed signs and wonders. But none of these prophets have ever said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None of them have ever said, I will die, and in three days, I will resurrect and ascend back to heaven. None of them, my brothers and sisters, can give life. So, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the only way. Do not, do not see it, or you may not believe it, but until the Lord himself has called you, we are not professing and proclaiming Jesus Christ because of theory. No, because of revelation. So, you cannot do it unless you have been called to it and the Lord has given you every evidence, physically and spiritually, and through his word. Praise the name of the living God. So, Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh. And when you receive him, you have eternal life. Whether you like it or not, you will not die. The flesh will go back to become a soil because he created it so that he could live in it. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, you will live. Your soul, your spirit will live forever. 
And where it goes to live forever is what we have to choose. If you choose to do good, you go to where good people are. But if in the good you are doing, the motive behind doing good is wrong. That's why we need the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to justify our good deeds so that we go to where the Lord Jesus Christ is. So you must choose for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are entering into the second aspect of today. The Lord, every month, the first week in the month, we do or we partake in the Lord's Supper, the communion. Hallelujah. So we are entering into that aspect of it now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I continue from the verse 1, verse 3 going. John 17, verse 3. He said, Now this is eternal life that they know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ, the only true God who became Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. The glory God had before he became flesh, that glory must be stored. Praise the name of the living God. That is why the glory of God come upon your life because you have chosen the path of righteousness and holiness in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> okay. Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh. Amen. It gives eternal life to all people who believe in him and all who will live according to eternal principles. He said we should partake in the breaking of bread. Hallelujah. So we are going to partake right now in the breaking of bread. But for uh, our viewers sake, let us read Matthew 26 verse 26 to 28. And then we'll come back home. Hallelujah. Matthew 26 verse 26 to 28. <clears throat> okay. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. For the forgiveness of sins. Praise the name of the living God. We have a new covenant. And this new covenant, it is signed, it is endorsed, recorded, contracted by the eternal blood of God. So when you are going to agreement with any organization or any man, you sign an agreement, pen and paper. But God signed a new agreement, a new contract. It's called covenant. And this covenant, it is by his blood. It is Tom Plint. Tom Plint is his blood. He signed this eternal covenant so that his blood will always speak on behalf of those who are in him. Those who are living in him. His blood will speak for you. Hallelujah. That is why the new covenant is in his blood. It is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. If you have sin in your life, the wrath of God is upon you. Satan can influence you. You may go on to continue. But if the blood forgives you, Satan cannot stand you and condemn you because it is Christ that forgives who will stand to condemn you when your Savior said that by his blood he has pardoned you. Praise the name of the living God. That is why, believers, we must partake in the Lord's Supper. Let no one deceive you and say, if you are a sinner, don't come and eat. The Bible says that Whilst we were yet still sinners, Christ died on behalf of sinners, the ungodly. So, you are a sinner, I am a sinner. Christ died for us. So, when you are a sinner, come and eat the bread which represents the body of Jesus Christ. Come and drink the, the wine, the fruit wine, which represents the blood of Jesus. Come and eat. But after you have eaten, then you must give honor to the Lord and go back and sin no more. Praise the name of the living God. He is the one who gives strength for people to stay upright. So I advise everyone when you go to your various de denomination and they say, if you are a sinner, don't come and eat. You, by the revelation of God's word, go and pray. Lord Jesus Christ, 
help me to take your body and to drink your blood. Let it enters me. By the power of your restoration, help me to stay out of sin so that I will do the right thing. Make this prayer, go and take it and allow the Holy Spirit to help you to come out of sin. Because with your own strength, you cannot. We are living and surrounded in sin. So you need the Supreme Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. So, I've said much, and it is my sincere prayer that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of cancer, will rest upon your mind, giving you a better translation and interpretation that I've done, because it is his work. And therefore, I am so happy that he will do that, and you will all come to the Lord the maturity of Christ Jesus and will grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. What is the Lord's Supper? We are doing this on our Zoom platform. Please, if you want to join us to, uh, to partake in the Lord's Supper, join us and after that, we will pray individual prayers. We cannot pray this on the social media, but on the Zoom platform, we can do that. So you may join us as Brother Peter send our links through Facebook and you can get it there. The Lord richly bless you. However, let me say this short prayer and then we end on the uh, Facebook and TikTok and then we continue on our Zoom platform. Amen. Let us pray. We are praying. Amen. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Lekata bragada zogondum bendele lelele koto sakina ragada sonda men kon kon pen ten ken to cross ke akabos ke anda ranta to sakina renda rata pori anda my lord my god rise on the clouds my lord my god in the name of our lord jesus Christ. arise and shine in the soul of your people every soul that is in darkness every soul that is covered with wrongdoing arise by your supreme holy spirit in their soul right now in Jesus' mighty name, may you restore your former glory to them in the name and in the blood of Jesus. My Lord, my God, may your glory shine on them. May you restore their glory back to them in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we cannot do without your supreme Holy Spirit. And therefore, we pray that the prompting of the Holy Spirit will be much that our dead minds and consciousness will receive him and turn away from wrongdoing. In Jesus' mighty name, my Lord, my God, I pray for all believers and unbelievers who has backslided that restore them, restore them, restore them to your faithfulness, your righteousness, your holiness, and restore them to eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. Restore them to eternal life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, if an unbeliever is about to die without knowing Jesus, my Lord, my God, by your supreme power, may time be suspended now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May time be suspended right now in Jesus' name. May the time be reversed that someone will go and preach Jesus Christ to that person. Hear the word of salvation before they die in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, let no one die in their sin. Let no soul die in their sin. But supernaturally, send your people to go and preach the salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. May they receive it, they repent, and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior before they die. I give you praise because you are a merciful, compassionate, gracious, everlasting Father. Thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. People of God, I will let us all unite and pray for all believers. Hallelujah. Let us pray for all unbelievers to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into their soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as a believer, please say after me. If you are someone who has not received the Lord Jesus Christ yet, also say this after me. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Please say this after me. Raise up your hands. 
and let your heart be open. That is all you need. It is supernatural. It's not natural. It's a word, but just open your heart, your soul right now, and just receive it. Please say after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead for my justification and salvation. Today, I repent of my wrongdoing. I repent of my sins. I turn away from my known sins. I wishfully invite you to come into my heart. I want to trust you as my Lord and personal Savior. Save me, Lord Jesus, from eternal hellfire. Save me, Lord Jesus, from eternal hellfire. When you are revealed, accept me into your glorious kingdom. Help me by the power of your Holy Spirit to live a holy and a righteous life. This I ask by your mercies and through your eternal holy blood, now and forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have said this, you are saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is inside you right now by his Holy Spirit because you have heard the word. And now, by the seal of that word, the Holy Spirit will come inside your, come inside your heart and your soul. Look for a Bible-believing church and go there and worship with them. Or you can also follow us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, and on Zoom. We hear the word of God that leads to eternal salvation. God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us pray. Great and mighty God, everlasting Father, I give you praise. You who created everything for your praise and glory, may you receive eternal glory from, from all your children right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for all the souls of your people that they are entered. None of them will be lost. None of them will be lost. If that before you come or before they die, they will not be lost in the name of Jesus. Protect their going out and their coming in. Protect them by your superior mighty war angels in Jesus' name. May the angel of the Lord carry you in their palm to cross dangerous zones in Jesus' mighty name. My Lord, my God, I pray that your eternal glory, success, elevation, expansion, Blessings will come upon your people wherever they are. In Jesus' name, those who desire business ideas, my Lord, my God, can put it into their hearts and minds and give them the energy to what to implement it. In Jesus' name, I pray that investors will invest in good ideas of your people right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, all those who do not have God, I pray that my Lord, my God, they will get God to do. In 